Howdy y'all, Tahiki here and welcome to another adventure. Um, just to give a heads up before we get into Final Fantasy XIV and Walker one more time. I have come down with a head cold. I have a um, cough drop in my mouth right now so we'll see how much talking I do. Um, I haven't had a head cold in like a year because I've been basically like self-isolating myself. So this is fun. First time I've had a head cold in a while. So last we left off, we had just gotten to this subway station turned into home base for the Garleans, and we met the leader of the First Legion, who was fighting on behalf of the slain Emperor Varus, um, and they had all fled Garlemald when the tower went up, um, and this is where they are hiding right now. Um, and then I came with the twins, Alfie and Ali, and we tried to talk to the leader, um, because one of his blue-haired little satellite guys, Julius, that guy, tried to steal food from us. Because they are short on supplies, too. It has gotten to the point where the Garleans are trying to steal supplies from us, right? But, as an act of assurance, they've put shock collars on my twins. Yeah! That's a shock collar. The same shock collars that they put on, um, if you remember in the Gunbreaker episodes, how we were talking to the Gunbreaker guy, I forgot his name right now, the Rothgar, he was talking about how he was tortured with a shock collar, and he actually has PTSD from it because the excruciating pain it would give him, and sometimes they would just do it for fun because he was a barbarian, right? Because he wasn't a Garlean. Well, they just put them on the twins, and they said if I step out of line, they will shock the twins. No. So, we're going to go ahead and speak to Julius here and see what else they need from us. We're kind of like pseudo-prisoners right now. We're not really like prisoners, prisoners, but we're not allowed to leave. We're allowed to roam around the encampment, but we're not allowed to leave the encampment until they decide what they want to do with us. So, let's um, talk to Julius and find out what to do next. Let's go! Oh yeah, you give me the stare. I'm here, I'm here. Julius has his orders, unpleasant though they may be. As per Lord Quintus's instructions, I am to supervise you during your time here in Terrarium. Terrarium. Before you ask, no, I don't have a key to any means to remove your collars, nor would I tell you if I did. And if you try anything, you'll soon wish you had it. So do you truly intend to speak with the others, or is that merely your ruse? We're in no hurry to disobey Lord Quintus, if that's what you mean. Or perhaps you doubt the wisdom of his decision. Think wisely, Julius. Do as you will, but remember, I will be watching. If I catch one of you doing anything untowned, untowed, untowered, trying to trick our people into trying to curse and like, shock is the least of your words, you understand? Though we're somewhat compromised, to put it lightly, let's not waste this opportunity. I suggest splitting up and learning what we can of this situation. Above all else, don't use magics of any sort. Except for the fact that you think it's glowing, it's kind of magic in itself. You, on the other hand, may go wheresoever you wish, even outside the camp. No fool, well, I couldn't stop you if I tried. <laughs> Excuse me. But do not forget, if you do anything to endanger us or our interests, off and on, I'll say we'll pay the price. Mm. I don't like you. Ooh, Mender! I'll speak to everyone in a moment. Oh, what? Yeah. Well, you're just a mini poo. <laughs> okay. You. This is so cold. This young soldier is on the verge of losing consciousness. It's you, Dag of Emker. I served under Lord Gaius of the 14th Legion. I was there the night Praetorium fell. You and your adventurers, you killed them. My comrades, my friends, swept them aside in the dozens, although they were nothing to you, so they were nothing to you. Maybe I am too, just another faceless enemy to cut down, but it won't be long at all because you may return until you get where you deserve, mark my words. Yeah, I'm not really welcome at all here. I'm gonna have to do something pretty drastic to get their trust. You came with Jealous, didn't you? Whatever business brought you here, you'd best keep your hands off the 
great. It's deactivated, but I'd rather you didn't mess around with it. There are others throughout the city, built by Garleans, four Garleans. Could teleport all over the Blake of Eye, provided there was a terminal nearby. These days, however, you see the race power to keep the place lit, so it comes to the cost of its normal function. That is how you die of uh, monoxide poisoning. Closed in space. Oh. Oh. He lost his daddy. And she's like, don't worry. He probably escaped. He didn't escape. Oh, well, this is their subway map. Wish I could read it. Dang, integrated system. Huh. Okay. Marsilius. Marcellinus. <laughs> I know you are the so-called champion of Eorzea. Came to gloat, have you? Always that smirk off your face. By the blood of our fallen compatriots, I swear I'll- Ugh. Ah, uh, tore with the sutures. Oh, all the times. In the worst of lot, within striking distance, and I can't even muster the strength. If it weren't for the thirds bleeding us, we'd be the end of you. Virgilius' treachery later cost Lord Quintus's life, but we made our escape. Took shelter in a mansion, tended to the wounded as we prepared to strike back, and then night fell and we gathered around the radio. Then the roar, the terrible roar. The capital was in chaos, but we were spared. If you call this a mercy, mind intact, but body broken, a soldier in name alone. I'd cut you down where you stand if I could, you murderer. So, again, this radio, the radio waves <laughs> seem to emit the same power that uh, the Blessing of Light does in terms of not being tempered by an etheric blast because the ground rattling when the capital fell, I think they said was um, was literally the, an etheric wave and so people listened to the radio swear they heard Emperor Varus' voice then, but everyone else became tempered, they stopped fighting and then all turned to the center to start building the Tower of Babel. So I'm wondering because there was a civil war going on, right? Because they had just fought each other. Like, Varus was murdered. Everyone thinks by Gaius. So a civil war brewed that one side was like, okay, it needs to go to the British succession. After Emperor Varus, and the other side was like, no, there was no successor because Xenos isn't there. Xenos isn't there. So we will take succession. So it was like, coup. So this fight broke out. And of course, it was in the city. Fueled by Van Daniel, he was funding both sides of the war. So I bet when that etheric wave went out, they were all thinking and praying of Varus because that's when they knew peace. Well, what a Garlean knows is peace. And so I think it made a primal of him. Or something like that. Don't turn off the radio. Your radio is the same model as so one and Victor spoils. Perhaps it was what saved the soldiers from being tempered. Alfie, what'd you learn? Alfie! Where are you? Did you learn anything of no? Yeah, they hate us! <laughs> Your fighters are consistent with my own. Their plight is desperate indeed. The sick and injured are at greatest risk. Without warmth their proper nutrition, I fear they will soon perish. Or at least there's precious little we can do for them at present, but I cannot bear to see them suffer. Please, will you help me tend to them? No! Because then they're just gonna shock you for using magic. Oh man, you are not doing good. Flavarius. Flavius. Cool dude? Who's there? My eyes say I can't see all that well. Ah, thank you. The numbness has subsided a little. But I know I won't last much longer. You should look at the others who still fight. Give them my rations. Me going hungry means someone else lives to see another day, so be it. Lest I can still serve in that way. Aww. Open it! Tell me, where does it hurt? I hate when there's children. My arm is killing me. I hate when there's children involved. So those you met fare no better? I'm afraid you would say that. 
I know we were warned against meddling the affairs, but we can't leave them like this. Perhaps we might gain permission to have a contingent to deliver supplies? Quintus may have made his feelings on the matter quite clear, but even he must recognize that they are not in position to refuse help. Maybe Julius could persuade him, though we need to persuade Julius first. Hey, Julius, we have supplies to make your people not die. Would you like some? Let's see if he wants any. Well, seen enough. Julius, the people here have barely enough food and fuel to survive. Have you and the other soldiers been able to procure any more supplies? No, because they tried to steal them from us. We've been scavenging provisions from the nearby houses as most families kept, kept rather, some stored away in the event that we were snowed in. Still, going out and getting it is dangerous work, and we have a lot of mouths to feed. Fuel is the greater concern, though. We had some ceruleum set aside until it was stolen. We haven't identified the culprit. Could have been other refugees or one of the afflicted for all we know. Either way, we're down to the last drag. Without the heating they need, those in pure health are going to get worse instead of better. We have ceruleum. If it's ceruleum we need, our contingent has secured a ready supply. We can have some sent over. Why won't you take it? We will not accept your charity. If you can hold on a little longer, the situation is sure to change. I, everything will change. One of your comrades mentioned something along those lines. Those mysterious countrymen of yours, I assume? One of your countrymen mentioned something along those lines. Heard something of it, have you? Well, from what I've seen, there's little you could do to interfere. So there's no harm in telling you. One of our scouts spotted a hooded man issuing instructions to the afflicted, or in the Blink's words, loyal servants of the Telophoroi. Then he made his way inside the Imperial Palace, or what stands in its place. We'd identified the seat of the enemy in power. We realized Lord Quintus dispatched a messenger to the 10th Legion saying as much, he instructed them to join forces with the provisional legions to prepare for a combined assault on the Telophoroi. So they're gonna go for it. Once our allies arrive, your contingent will be sent running for the hills. Then we shall reclaim the capital by our own hand. And how do you intend to survive in the meantime? At this rate, many of your countrymen will perish long before reinforcements reach Barlamal. And I need help now. Say the word, and we will bring you to relic. We're willing to give you something you need to survive, even though you just said you were going to kill us. Don't shock him. I was speaking with Lord Quintus. Thank you. We might have convinced him. I don't think we convinced him. What do you say? So, did he agree to it? Nope. No, he will not place Garlem on the debt of her enemies. I have, however, been ordered to search for Slurm outside. As you are under my watch, you will come with me. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Very well. After all, many hands make light work. <laughs> he doesn't like our optimism. You're a lot more trouble than you're worth. Once we are outside, you will follow my instruction to the letter. We depart shortly. Okay. I don't think you want to hear me clear my throat. Okay. Ooh, is this better? 525. Okay, before we continue, I'm not attuned to the etherate though. I was going to get level 84 equipment. No, we'll wait. We begin our search for Cerulean in Rigiro Urbanissima. The first location is Forum Solius, a park to the northwest of the station. You are to remain close at all times and act only as ordered. Follow me. Or we could just give you our spare ceruleum because we're not using it currently. Or not, that works too. We ride on. Oh, what? 
Why did that just do that? No, 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 no. Is my computer acting up again? Where's the entrance to this thing again? Yep, it is. Oh! Yeah, forget that. We're gonna go back to, um... I don't think there's a board there. We're going back to old Charlie. I'm gonna go back to old Charlie and really quick. And I have to apparently reset my computer. <sighs> what a night. Okay. We're gonna get equipment. Hold on. Sorry about all that. I had to restart my computer again. My computer has not been kind to me as of late. It has not. Nope, 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 nope. No, it's not worth it. Bracelet? Nope, nope, not worth it. Ring! Maybe for one of mine? 184,000? Shoot! 149,000. Wow, never mind. I can't read. Ugh. I look terrible. No. The land I play. Apply. Really? <sighs> I hate my computer right now. I really freaking hate my computer right now. And I gotta dye my jacket. My beautiful, beautiful jacket. Yep, that's right. Add some color! Okay, now we have to go back to Gollumald. Get for 13.55! Ah, uh, that's, that's a lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, okay. Find my new mount. Let's go! Oh, this place is empty now. That shows you how many people have finished this. And you apparently don't come back very often. This many people have already left it. Go cha cha. Okay. What if we killed Ceruleum sprites? Would we just get Ceruleum? That'd be pretty cool. Safer. No. Yeah, I'm gonna pass in front of you too. Yep. There we go. Yep. goes again. My computer is really misbehaving, everyone. It's making me very sad. I guess after this next mission, I'm just gonna have to stop her tonight because my computer is dumber than a bag of bricks. <sighs> very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. There it goes again. Just hold on a little bit longer, please. Uh, just a little bit further. No, don't get that on me. Nope. It's terrible that this was a residential district. I finally made it. Sorry, I had to change my clothes and everything. I had to look good. So this is the park. I'm surprised they found space for one amongst all these buildings. Actually, the recreational areas came first. The houses were later built around them. A healthy society requires communal spaces for children to play and adults to socialize. The park was named after the father of our great empire, the great Solus Zos Galvis, Emmett Selk. Did we come to extract Cerulean from the wrecked Magitek armor? 
No, we've already drained dry. Same goes for the rest of the Machina in the vicinity. But as our ceruleum has been stolen, we must scour the city for every last drop. While I don't expect to find anything here, I've decided to try one more time in case something has been overlooked. I see. Then with your permission, we will commence the search. Okay, let's look for some ceruleum. We can draw out the match tech, because they've already done that. Hey, Alfie. I doubt it's going to be in the board. I don't imagine they matched me for magic tech in a park of all places, but then again, I wasn't raised in Garlemont. May have used Ceruleum I have yet to consider. Oh, this is what the park looked like! Oh, it actually looks kind of nice. It had a little pool and a little pergola thing. In the middle here was the, the grassy area with like picnic tables. Well, not picnic tables, but like a bench. That's so sad. Who's that? Splash pad? The cursory inspection of the wreckage confirms that the fuel canisters have long since been drained, as Julissa said. Hey, Julius, was this a splash pad of some sort? What was this? Julius ignores you as he stares in the water in silence. As searching for something he knows he's, he's gone and will never return. Splash, 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 splash. <laughs> sorry to ruin that, sorry. Okay. Can I go out this week? Nope. Children's slide. I doubt there'd be ceruleum in the slide. The contraption is built in the style of Imperial Warp Machina, armed with battery weapons and capable of transforming into different configurations. But on closer inspection, it looks more than a slide. Hmm. So it's probably gonna be somewhere in here. Ooh, Alice! This, whatever it is, appears to be some sort of symbolic meaning related to the park. Even though the place is named after Solace, it doesn't seem to be a statue of him. At least not anymore. Maybe it was once a fountain, or something where a man himself used to sit. Not that it would matter, even if we knew. We can't help but wonder. Ah, huh, yeah, I wonder what was in here. Hmm. I don't think it was a fountain. Would you stop glitching? I really hit my computer right now. Give me a second. Well, I don't know what's going on, but let's just try to finish this, maybe. We can't. It keeps glitching! Okay. I'm gonna try to restart my computer one more time. If that doesn't work, I'm just gonna have to end it abruptly because it keeps glitching. Um... Which is going to be very bad if there's a fight because I'm going to lag and die. So give me one more second. I'm going to try to see what is going on my computer before I go reach for my sledgehammer. Be right back. Okay. This is it. If it does it again, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So let's hope it doesn't uh, glitch again. Okay. We were looking for Ceruleum. Yes. In a kid's park. Too far away. It is a really nice map. Several points of interest are marked on the map of Forum Solius. The pond, children's play area to your knowledge, however, none would require the use of ceruleum. Well, we don't know that. Is there a vending machine that needs power? Aha! A shop counter, look at that! A shop would need power. This is a shop. Very low stall. The rather small by Garlean standards, the structure is reminiscent of a merchant stall. Perhaps it was built for children to play as shopkeeper. There is nothing inside resembling magic tech or any other the device that could be used or fueled by ceruleum. It just did it again. Are you kidding me right now? Okay, well, you know what? We're just gonna have to deal, unfortunately. It's just gonna be one of those. <sighs> I've got a head cold. My game doesn't want to play along with me. Once we complete the quest, we're probably gonna call it quits for tonight. 
All right, Julius. Ooh, cutsy. You seem lost in thought. Couldn't find any ceruleum. Oh, it's you? Any luck? No. None of us found any, did we? There's no sign of any ceruleum. Hmm, really surprising but disappointing nonetheless. I couldn't help but noticing you gazing at the pond. Is something the matter? Yeah, my computer is not behaving. That's what's the matter. What? Yes, I mean, no, I'm... It's just I used to bring my brother and sister here to play. Aw. The pond was heated to stop it from freezing over. Ceruleum! So, like all the other children, they just had to wait and splash about. But it stayed there if I didn't drag them out. We'd be sopping wet when all was said and done. Every time. And every time when we get home, Mother would scold us, saying we'd catch her in death walking around like that. Pond was heated. With a cerulean powered heater, by chance. I suppose it must have been, come to think of it. I remember seeing engineers changing out a tank beneath the hatch. But that was a long time ago, when the water still flowed clear. Wasn't this brackish muck? can't see a thing, and I can't remember where the hatch might be. With the machinery most likely broken, the amount of filth in there is probably the only reason it hasn't frozen over. I'd wager it's still unbearably cold, though. Julius, what are your thoughts on magic? The average guardian would jump out of their skin if they saw it, but the, f but the first has a few foreign signifier and medici. Medikai, if it doesn't scare, so it doesn't scare me. I take you won't mind if I employ a little now. Alpha, no. As you have a knack for finding dry wood, why don't you bring me some? Once that's done, a blast of bare fire should do the trick. Leave it to me. You're not planning to go in there, are you? Of course I am. The tank isn't going to fetch itself. It's nothing so involved as distracting unpleasant silly and frozen frozen flakes. Like how the tappers do it. We're talking about a shallow pond and a park. And we have a way of warming ourselves up after. But that's insane. Fancy a dip? A little friendly competition might make things interesting. The last thing we need you catch a cold already did. <laughs> Step aside while I drink the pond dry. That way we'll find it in no time. No, a little friendly competition. Could make things interesting. Last one to find a find really and take is a rotten egg. Though I dare say we'll both smell like rotten eggs when this is over. Okay, let's go find a cerulean tank. I'm gonna start in the middle. Anything? You delve into the murky router but come up empty handed. To add injury to insult, icy wind now damage your clothes and choking the bone. Oh no! Anything here? No, I'm still chilled to the bone! It's gonna be the last one I check. It's always the last one. Beneath the water, your fingers catch something that might be a handle. I found it! So is the pond gonna drain now? Nope. But I am soaking wet. You open the hatch and retrieve a ceruleum tank. I'm also frozen solid. <laughs> However, you're going to discover it cancer and personal cost as you become actually acutely aware of the freezing cold and a rancid over emanating from your every elm of your body. Julius will doubtless feel compelled to pinch his nose shut when you deliver him his prize. Um... I found it, but I'm frozen. I beat you. You found it? That must be another one somewhere. There isn't. Warm me. Did you find anything? I hope you did. Here's your tank. I found it. That's it. There's still some ceruleum left. Ah, uh, the fire's still not ready. Hold on, I'll give Alpha Noah a hand. Oh, they're, they're helping each other!
Oh, well, that was awfully nice. Call me an old dawn because my fire I am reborn. My clothes are mostly dry now, too. I appreciate you recovering this ferulium, but I wish you'd taken the time to discuss the plan with me beforehand. Despite the way you've been treated, in Lord Quintus's eyes, you're still envoys deserving of protection. If you were to die on my watch, you would be most displeased. Your concern is duly noted, but all's well that ends well. Julius, you mentioned coming here with your younger siblings. Did you grow up in Garland Mall? I did, not far from here. My father was an accomplished researcher in his youth. For his contributions to the Empire, he was awarded an estate. We lived well, better than many. What was Carla Mauld like in those days? Peaceful to his standards. Everything. It was everything you can imagine and so much more. Even during the coldest winters, we always found warmth and comfort at home. Coming in from the snow, taking off your coat, and sitting down for a hot meal with family. Visiting friends and relatives, receiving that same welcome, knowing that I had everything they needed. Walking down the streets, seeing the lights in all the houses, hearing the faint sounds of laughter and song, of happiness. And although the summers came and went all too quickly, in that brief respite, the ice would melt and the forgotten grass made its triumphant return. Gray clouds gave way to blue skies. Some mornings we climbed to the top of the tallest building so we can watch the sunrise. Aww. Never again. Those rooftops are rubble. Those friends are dead and those memories. But if I could reclaim even a fraction of what we once had, soon our chance will come. We just need to hold on a little longer. Aww. They were a happy people. In a weird way. I mean, they were happy at home. They didn't care about all the war that they were causing out God knows where. Aww. Well, unfortunately, that's where we're going to have to end it prematurely today. Because I am very, very congested right now. And um, my computer is not behaving. I'm going to have to find out what's going on with it before I try this again. So, a little bit of a downer, but that's okay. It happens once in a while. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.